Oh my Whoa. god. Oh my god. Hello and welcome back to some more Cyber React. Today we're reacting to the 10 most dangerous stunts ever performed. Uh, like Harry's one when he jumped on a car and he broke his neck. Or oh, when your boy Vicstar uh, decided to do a little jump at skiing. <laughs> that wasn't dangerous. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the worst one. That was a proper stunt, that was. That's a, that's a safe stunt turned dangerous. <laughs> he flew. Uh, he flew. <laughs> I just ordered Nando's, by the way. Well, if you, sorry as always, as always. As always. But boy, I'm not a lie, I'm absolutely starving. How much should I join you in ordering? something you know what i've been going for recently the great imitator rap i'm getting the, the yeah the sick one. Yeah, yeah. but the pitter the pitter version's better but they start doing the pitter version bit, bit of nonsense on that line always pitter oh this this sounds epic Dude, big time man many of us would be utterly terrified at the thought of even attempting to skydive have you all skydived yes, no sir. where did you skydive Vic? corsica uh, yeah. Island of Spain. I was with some French that dude. That's for just didn't speak cause. English. Yeah, it was for just cause. I jumped out with some French guy. He didn't speak English. I was like, uh, "Is the, are we good to go?" He's like, uh, "Yes, go fast. We go." I'm like, okay, <laughs> "Right." That's <laughs> the experience. Uh, it's fast. Uh, we go. Aikens, a third-generation skydiver whose grandfather co-founded a skydiving school, performed a stunt on live television in 2016 that few would attempt without a gun to their head. With the cameras rolling, he stepped out of a plane 25,000 feet above the California desert. Without a parachute, right? With no parachute. Using only the air currents, he expertly directed his body toward a 10,000 square foot net, about a I'm third the size of a football like field, designed to catch him. I thought, I thought he was in the net dead center on his back, like executing the stunt perfectly. Bro, he landed to the side of it, to be fair to him. Eggins is no stranger to danger. He's done over 18,000 jumps, performed dangerous stunts for Hollywood films such as Iron Man 3, and he's even a safety and training advisor for the United States Parachute Association. Do you think he jumps 18,000 jumps? Is? Yeah, wait, what? Yeah, they do a lot. If you're like, if that's 18,000, like... What, so let's say he's doing, he's doing like three, 300 three, a year. Three a day for a year is 1,000. So for 18 years, he's been doing three a day. Yeah. That's fucked. But also, yeah, the math does add up. It seems like a lot, doesn't it? 18,000 times he jumps out of a plane. In August 1974, Frenchman for Lippe Petit shocked the world with a stunt that was as illegal as it was dangerous. He had managed to sneak onto the roof of one of the World Trade Center towers, and as crowds of spectators watched, he proceeded to walk across a steel cable connecting That's the two towers, nuts. far above the streets of Manhattan. And then he crossed it again and again. Before the police were able to coax him down, Petit had crossed the cable no fewer than eight times. He had Jesus. played to the crowds by dancing, laying down on the wire, right. and saluting them from a kneeling position. The event generated a ton of publicity for the Twin Towers, and authorities were quick to drop trespassing charges in exchange for a free aerial performance in a city park. Petit was given a <laughs> lifetime pass to the tower's observation decks by the Jeez. New York Port Authority, well, and his gosh. story became the basis for two Hollywood films, The Walk, a 2005 fictionalized account starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Man on Wire, a 2008 documentary which won an Academy Award. That's supposed to be really good, actually. I, I, you know, I'm intrigued to watch that, because I want. I, yeah. I, my question was, how did he managed to sneak up there and make a wire. Or is, is the wire always there? It might Or they put the wire there? Nah, the wire can't always be there. Wait, you reckon? Nah. Mm, I, I don't know. know. Can we snuck up there? You'd have to do it like twice, right? You have to go up to one, one side and the other one. <laughs> yeah. Throw yeah, it. You'd, you'd have to yeah. throw it to something. You'd have to throw it across and then it seems to work. In 2008, motorcycle daredevil Robbie Madison broke the Guinness World Record when he completed a 322-foot jump. But that was just his warm-up act. Jesus a year Christ. to the day later, he would perform a stunt on national television that seemed impossible, and one that even he acknowledged he was lucky to walk away from. As the crowd cheered him on, he raced down a specially built ramp and launched his motorcycle 120 feet, landing squarely atop the 96-foot high, 40-foot wide Arc de Triomphe. But he wasn't done. He then dropped himself and his bike 50 feet onto a waiting ramp. The stunt oh, appeared to go off without a hitch, there, right? but there was a small complication. During the drop onto the ramp, he sustained a gash in his hand that required 10 stitches to close. Oh, he barely, he didn't make, he, he like, he, he made the bottom of the ramp there, like, yeah. he hit hard. The stunt appeared to go off without a yeah. hitch, but there was a small complication. During the drop onto the ramp, he sustained a oh. gash in his hand that required 10 stitches to close. Madison laughed it off, saying, I've broken my neck, knocked my teeth out, broke my collarbone, punctured my lung, broke my left wrist How twice. This is like a paper cut. I got one of those. If you build an extraordinarily tall skyscraper, you can expect a visit from Elaine Robert, known around the world as the French Spider-Man. Oh, he free climbs, eh? He's known for tackling all of the world's tallest structures, from the Empire State Building to the Sydney Opera House, using nothing but climbing shoes and a bag of chalk. In 2004, <laughs> he scaled the Taipei 101, at the That's time the mad. tallest building in the world, several days before its grand opening. Then, when Dubai's Burj Khalifa was built, oh, it's the insane that, skyscraper featured yeah. in the film Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Robert didn't let it go unscaled for long. 
He completed the climb of over 2,700 feet up the tower's face wow. in 2011. It's one of his only climbs during which he had to use additional equipment, but only because of the say. spire at the tower's top, which would have been impossible to complete freehand. I don't understand, bro. So he, he just he just climbs the glass? Yeah, he just gets his hands in like little grooves of glass, doesn't he? It's mental. Oh, Jesus. The climb took six hours to complete, and the new tallest building on Earth Fuck had been conquered. That, man. But of course, that. Robert didn't stop there. In the years since, he's ascended nine more skyscrapers, and the 54 year old doesn't seem to want to stop anytime soon. In 2010, Austrian skydiver Paul Steiner completed one of the craziest mid-air stunts ever attempted, with a little help from the Red Bull skydiving team. Their pilots maneuvered a pair of custom gliders with stone-cold precision to allow Steiner to perform his act of insanity, which was captured on cameras mounted all over the gliders. To begin, Steiner left the cockpit of Glider 1, walked out to the edge of the hey, wing and had a seat. Then he hung like by that? his hands off the edge of the wing the while Glider number no, 2 bro. came along below to pick him up. He I made thought... his way to the body of Glider 2 while Glider 1 flipped upside down and approached from above. Steiner steadied himself as it drew closer, then grabbed its tail fin, linking the two aircraft. He finished by simply jumping off the glider and skydiving to safety. All of this took place at speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour. If normal skydiving that, just isn't dangerous absolutely. enough for you, the guys That's at the nuts. Red Bull skydiving team are ready to take your call. Jeb Corliss is perhaps the premier wingsuit pilot in all the world. He considers it his full-time job, as it's too dangerous to do just for fun. That's where he died. I don't know. And some of his jumps have truly pushed the envelope. In 2011, he glided through a 100-foot wide arch in the middle of China's Tianmen Maybe Mountain, not, the not. sort of stunt practically nobody but Corliss would even think of attempting. But he suffered a setback Wing in 2012 during a jump at Table Mountain in South Africa, okay, as his foot clipped a rock and sent him <laughs> crashing into the face of the mountain. The incident left him with two broken legs and a torn ACL, but didn't stop Ow. him from attempting by far the most dangerous jump of his career just over a year later. In October 2013, during a break oh, yeah, of intermittently fucked, bad bro. weather, he piloted his wingsuit through a crevice in China's 875-foot Langshan Mountain. This crevice is only 60 feet wide at the top and 15 feet wide at the bottom, but Corliss managed to thread the needle and complete the stunt, an event captured in the short film The Flying Dagger. He called the stunt the most terrifying thing he had ever done, with the memory of the Table Mountain incident still fresh in his mind, and say, said that he yeah. would refuse $10 million to do it again. Hollywood legend Burt Reynolds once said of stuntman Dar Robinson, in terms of sheer courage, Dar had no peer. He knew what he was talking about. For a scene in Reynolds' 1981 thriller Sharky's Machine, Robinson had completed a 220-foot freefall drop onto an air mattress, a new world record. But the record Whoa. wouldn't stand, because Robinson couldn't stop topping himself. Since the construction of Canada's 1170-foot CN Tower, jumps have been performed from it only twice, both times by Dar Robinson. He did it once for the American TV show That's Incredible, and again for the climax wait, of a forgettable he, 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 Canadian wait, 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 thriller wait, wait, called wait, wait, High Point. He jumps from this height onto an airbag? Yeah. Yeah. From that height? Yeah. Yeah. For the climax of a forgettable Even Canadian that, thriller called High Point, for which he was paid a whopping $150,000. It was a 700-foot freefall that relied on a hidden parachute being deployed at the last possible minute, and it went off without a hitch. Robinson would go on to bring his brand of insanity to films such as William Friedkin's To Live and Die in L.A. Wait, so there's a freefall with... Nah, he's, there's something on him. It's a wire on him there, wasn't it? I guess that's probably to keep him going in a straight line. Robbie Knievel's last name is synonymous with high-flying daredevilry, and we'll be discussing his famous father shortly. But Robbie has earned his reputation as one of the greatest daredevils of all time, not because of his name, but because like the daredevil of the comic books, he is truly a man without fear. His crowning achievement came in 1999, when he wow. broke his own world record by completing an astounding motorcycle jump of just over 228 feet. This is impressive enough, but the consequences for failing this jump would have been a bit more severe than normal. The jump was completed across a portion of the Grand Canyon, and if he hadn't stuck the landing, he could have plummeted 2,500 feet into the gorge below. But stick Jesus. it he did, with room to spare. Robbie made the jump on an ordinary 500cc motorcycle, unlike the most famous jump ever performed by his father, which required slightly more specialized hardware. Evil Knievel yeah. is without question the most renowned daredevil of all time. He completed over 75 daring ramp-to-ramp -ramp motorcycle jumps in the late 60s and 70s, and ignited the public imagination with his acts of daring do. But his most famous attempt was also one of the most dangerous stunts ever performed, and it ended in failure. Evil's attempt to jump Idaho's Snake River Canyon in 1974 was one of the first events to be broadcast to movie theaters. Oh, no. Bro, like, did you see the jackass rocket when they did that and they just, like, completely, like, failed? Like, there's so much, mm -hmm. like, obviously this is a bit more high-tech, but, like, why are you putting yourself in a bloody rocket? Like, for what? Like it reminds me of a uh, Kanye West Touch the Sky music video. 
Pretty sure it's the same thing, right? Yeah, so it's based yeah. on. But I, I... He used a specially designed rocket-powered cycle called the Sky Cycle X2, which was really more rocket than cycle, and which would take off nearly vertically before hopefully landing on the other side of the canyon. Yeah, While the craft did clear the entire distance, Evil's parachute deployed prematurely, causing prevailing winds to push it back into the mouth of the canyon before it could reach the other side. The craft landed at the bottom of the canyon only a few feet away from a body of water, which Evil had been lucky to avoid as he likely would have drowned if he had landed in it. Oh, he he walked away it. from the failed stunt mm. unharmed, and many daredevils in the years since, including Robbie, have expressed interest in recreating the jump successfully. In 2016, one finally did. Professional stuntman Eddie Braun had idolized Evil Knievel as a boy, oh. and his September 2016 act of homage to his hero may very well be the most dangerous stunt ever performed. Oh, I'm all ears. Using a custom-built rocket nearly identical to the X-2 called Evil Spirit, Braun launched himself 1,400 feet across Snake River Canyon oh at speeds God. of over 400 miles per hour. This time, the parachute deployment happened right on cue, and Braun landed safely on the other side. Many had talked about it, but Braun was the first to attempt to recreate the Evil's famous jump, well. and the fact oh that he pulled God. it off is a minor miracle. He told the press, I feel like the no-name third-string quarterback of a junior varsity team that just won the Super Bowl. Oh my God. And added, I'd like to say that I'm not doing something that Evil Knievel couldn't do. I'm simply finishing out his dream. How many people get to finish the dream of their hero? Wow. So what are you doing next, Harry? What are you doing? What, what, mate, I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> what stunt are you going to pull I'm, I'm shook now. Like, we went uh, for our, well, it's probably going to go out after Sunday, Sunday, for our treetop climbing we did. Oh, I used to be able to smash it. Like, I used to be like fine. Like, I used to like, run across it. I went this time. I was fucking holding the wire. You've hit, you've hit the age where fear, fear now exists for you. Oh yeah, but I don't know, mate. Because I'm not for some stuff. I'm not fearful, but just like heights and stuff. I'm like, oh, I, I, like I can't really do it anymore. Have you, have you always been funny about heights? Not as much. Uh, I don't think so. No. This man's pinged. I've seen him ping himself off snowboard jumps into. Yeah, I've seen you jump off cliffs into water. I've seen you jump off of a. Uh... In the in the Mar in the Marbella house in pitch black, you jumped off to <laughs> the, the ledge into a pool. I was, quite I, told you I, was, I, was, I was quite drunk then, though, so maybe it was uh, was what what. And, what, and what, you couldn't what, see where he was landing, so I guess that would have helped. <laughs> 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 oh, no, 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 no new stunts come from Harry soon. He's, he's too shocked now. He's too shocked. 